Thank you, Wendy. Thank you, Dale. I've got chills. I heard that at 9.30. I got chills, and I still got chills again. <laughs> this song about open-hearted connection, I mean, it really, it's not just the theme of today, but it carries through last week. I was talking about recognizing the common human experience and this song about asking for guidance and not being sure and wanting to have open hearts. It just carries through that theme. And now, another common human experience. Now, how many of you have seen this viral social media post? It went up the day after um, the new uh, violence in Israel and Gaza started. And the text that goes with it reads, I'm Jewish. My neighbor, Zahia, is Palestinian Muslim. Today, I brought her baklava, a homemade tea blend and homemade soap and a large orchid. She took me into her arms and we cried. We talked for a long, long time. Her husband served me Arabic coffee and she served me stuffed grape leaves. They sent me home with more grape leaves, lamb for Greg, a kafia, and their last bag of cardamom coffee from Palestine. They talked about how nice Greg is for shoveling their snow. She said she would make kanafe, my favorite Palestinian dessert, for me. Stop making change theoretical and abstract. It is knocking on neighbors' doors and sharing coffee and sweets. It is telling each other stories. It is heart to heart, neighbor to neighbor. We are all human. We all want a place to call home and for our babies and grandmothers to be safe. Peace begins with me. So at its core, this post is about connection. It's about that common human experience. And Brene Brown defines connection as the energy that exists between people when they can give and receive without judgment. And this post was about food. Who noticed how much food was talked about in there? So much food. My mouth is watering. Uh, baklava, stuffed grape leaves, cardamom coffee. Who wants to just go have lunch? Can we just call it a day and go have lunch? Right? Who here likes to eat? I thought so from that reaction, right? And whether you like to eat or not, eating food is a requirement for life. <laughs> You know, that's something that all animals have in common, not just the human animals. Uh, and the rituals that humans have designed around eating are for strengthening connections. We nourish our hearts as we nourish our bodies. You know, that social media post ended with, peace begins with me. And I read that as recognition of my individual Christ light, that first face of God, the inner God, unity's second principle. And each of us is an individual expression of the divine. So if I recognize my own divinity, I must recognize it in everyone else too. And what does that have to do with food? Well, I love to cook. This bumper sticker is on my car. And a few years ago, my home church in Oregon hosted the Northwest Regional Conference. And I got to be the chauffeur for some of the people that came in from out of town. And one of them was really puzzled looking at this bumper sticker because she missed the last few words, I guess the shadow from the way it was parked or something. She thought it read, love people, cook them. True story. But the full slogan is love people, cook them tasty food. And it's from a spice company based in Wisconsin called Penzi's. And Bill Penzi writes, before cooking, strength was the power to drive others away. With cooking, strength became the power to welcome others in. Through cooking, we learned the world becomes a better place when we care about others. 
He's reminding us to nourish our hearts as we nourish our bodies. Just think about your favorite meals. Now, I don't mean your favorite dish, what you're going to ask for on your birthday. I mean your memories about eating. Where were you? Who were you with? Maybe it was a large gathering of extended family at the holidays. Maybe it was a special anniversary dinner. Maybe it was unity on the Bay's annual peace picnic. While some tasty food is a bonus, it's that connection over a shared meal that you remember. You know, in the early days of my marriage to Arrestus, we didn't have many opportunities to go out to dinner. We, ha we really quickly had little babies at home, and we were vegan before vegan was cool, so it was kind of hard to find a place to eat. But those few occasions from those early years of our marriage, both of us could tell you every little detail from that one restaurant within tw a 25 mile radius of where we lived that served vegan food. Horizons Cafe, I remember the lighting, and we could tell you every spice that we could taste in our favorite Polynesian Saitan. So it's about the connection, not necessarily just about the food, it's that ritual and the connection. We nourished our hearts as we nourished our bodies. And these rituals of connection over food have existed for as long as humans have gathered together. Jesus had rituals of connection. Remember the Last Supper? Yes, everyone does, because that was a momentous occasion. But ultimately, it was a gathering of extended family during the holy days. Now, research suggests that having dinner together as a family, at least four times a week, has positive effects on child development. Family dinners have been linked to a lower risk of obesity, substance abuse, eating disorders, and an increased chance of graduating from high school. Can you imagine? It's just that simple act of eating dinner together. And in another study, totally separate, 59% of respondents said that they were more likely to make healthier food choices when eating with other people. Think about it. When you're going home from work after a long day, if you know you're going home to just sit in front of the TV by yourself, what are you going to do? You just go through a McDonald's drive through right? Hey, I'm guilty. Give me that Taco Bell vegan crunch wrap. <laughs> but if we know that we're going to share the meal, if we're meeting a friend, we'll choose a nicer restaurant. If we have family we're going home to, we'll plan to cook a meal, right? I love to cook when my husband's at home. So the food, the food is nourishing our, well, excuse me, our ritual of eating together is nourishing our hearts as we nourish our bodies. That act of eating together is greater than simply the sum of the nutrients because eating together has all these great effects. So food is actually connecting us to something greater than ourselves. When my kids were young, Again, we were living in Oregon, so we had the great fortune to visit some of the family farms where our food came from. We shopped at the farmer's markets and we supported community-supported community agriculture. So we had a ritual over our dinner that each of us would say something that we were grateful for that day. And everyone had to say something. And sometimes it was just, I'm thankful mom cooked dinner. Or, I'm thankful that dad picked me up from track practice. But we really tried to focus them on the food that was on their plate. I'm thankful for the green beans. Where did the green beans come from? Oh, well, I'm thankful for that farmer who planted the seeds and fertilized the soil. And I'm thankful for the sunshine and the fresh air and the clean water that helped those plants to grow. Connection to something greater than ourselves. And a dramatic story about being connected to something greater than ourselves comes from the blue zones. The blue zones are hot spots of longevity around the world that have been studied for decades now. 
And this gentleman is named Stamatus Moraitis. And he came to the United States at the age of 22. He worked as a painter, married, had three children. Typical American life. And in his 60s, he was diagnosed with terminal lung cancer. He was given six to nine months to live. Now, he and his wife realized that to bury him in the United States was going to be very costly. So they decided they wanted to leave more money to their children. So they went back to his hometown on a small island in Greece to wait for him to die. They figured it would be cheaper to have a simple burial by the sea. So they went back to Greece and moved in with his parents. Now, mind you, he's in his 60s, and both of his parents were still alive. Moved in with his parents, and every day, his old friends started coming over to visit. They'd bring food from their gardens. They'd bring their homemade wine. And he'd spend his days sitting out, breathing the sea air, and visiting with friends. Well, after three months, he started feeling stronger. So he planted a garden. After another three months, he felt stronger still. So he planted a vineyard. And he thought to himself, well, you know, I'm not going to see the harvesting of these grapes. But at least when my wife harvests the grapes and drinks the wine, she can think of me. Nine months now goes by, and he's feeling great. He's harvesting that first batch of grapes. Years go by. Forty years later, Dan Buettner, who studied the Blue Zones, interviewed him. And he said, I guess I just forgot to die. <laughs> he lived to 102 years old. At one point, he went back to America and tried to see his old doctors to ask them what had happened. All those doctors were dead. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So connection to the earth and to others. Connection to something greater than ourselves brings life and love and wine, yes. <laughs> so now how do we act on this truth that we know, this truth of connection? Well, Unity author Richard Lynch wrote, love is the action of life. In his book, The Secret of Health, he wrote, love is goodwill in action. The meaning of Christianity lies not just in joining a church or subscribing to a creed. It is in being so filled with the love of all life so as to feel responsible for it. There is no use in preaching love if we cannot practice it. If you would receive goodness, you must give it out as the loving service that desires to help others by making their burdens lighter. An example of practicing love with food is the World Central Kitchen. This is an organization founded by Chef Jose Andres, and their mission says World Central Kitchen is the first to the front lines providing fresh meals in response to humanitarian, climate, and community crises. And yes, they are sending aid to Gaza right now. Chef Jose writes, World Central Kitchen started with a simple idea at home with my wife, Patricia. When people are hungry, send in cooks. Not tomorrow, today. And their website reads, not only is a thoughtful, freshly prepared meal one less thing someone has to worry about in the wake of a disaster, it is a reminder that you are not alone. Someone is thinking about you. Someone cares. Food has the power to be the nourishment and hope we need to pick ourselves back up in the darkest times. So food from World Central Kitchen and here in Miami, we have branches and Chapman Partnership. That's the literal manifestation of the divine ideas of comfort and unlimited source and supply for those in crisis. 
So they're nourishing hearts as they're nourishing the bodies. And herein lies our call to action, to love. Love enters this world through each and every one of us. Unity author Eric Butterworth asks us to make a commitment to the activity of loving. He writes, love is the action of a totally transcendent power and a process within you. It begins in a cosmic source, flows out through you, and goes on without end. So eating food is proof of our common humanity. Eating together, we receive nutrients for our body as well as the love that our souls crave. So today, I invite you to love people. Cook them tasty food. Nourish your heart with connection as you nourish your body over a meal. And so it is. Thank you so much for visiting our YouTube channel. We post new videos every week to keep you positive, present, and inspired to your divinity. Please click on the subscribe button below and also that notification bell. Remember to share this with your friends and your family, those that you know will be inspired just like you have been. And always remember that we love you, that we bless you, that we behold the Christ in you, and we see you doing great things. Thanks and take care.